land belongs to, to the state and that individual peasants have use rights. The change that has occurred in the last six, seven years has been the large scale investments given out to investors, both domestic investors as well as foreign investors. So if this continues, large scale uh, investors will control predominant uh, portion of the land in the country. Addis Ababa, capital of Ethiopia. In this trading room, all the agricultural goods of the country are being bought and sold. Coffee, sesame, corn, wheat. In the last 20 years, Ethiopia, country of 80 million people, has tripled its production and is witnessing an economic miracle. A double-digit growth boosted by foreign investors rushing into the country to get hold of the land, one of the most fertile in the African continent. Ethiopia has become the new breadbasket for rich countries. At 700 kilometers west of Addis Ababa, Gambala is one of the greenest and water richest regions of the country. Here, thousands of hectares have already been allocated to foreign investors. Leading Indian, Chinese or even Saudi food producers export their production to Asia and to Europe. Two ethnic groups live on these lands, the Nuers, cattle breeders, and the Anuaks, farmers. A threat is hanging over their heads. Their territory is being reduced to nothing. community is being surrounded by these large commercial farms. Ogulu is the leader of the community. He represents the village in front of the public authorities. Farming remains his main activity. He farms without any machine nor irrigation system. The survival of his community depends on these two hectares of corn. Each year, Ugulu sells a third of his crop at the market. One ton for $130. He would like to improve his performance to spare his community from starvation. The priority of the government is elsewhere. 
In the offices of the Ministry of Agriculture in Addis Ababa, they roll out the red carpets to foreign investors. The director of investments is talking to a Turkish businessman who is already established in Ethiopia and who is planning to expand his cotton business. Okay. Uh, you know, the, uh, you have a good experience, especially on agriculture. Uh, therefore, uh, that have a uh, great contribution for us. You know, the, uh, one of the, our, our interest, while we have given the land, technology, management is uh, important. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> you know, our office is so open. Okay, this if, is if you our need, office. You, you, if you need to have uh, a chair, We'll give you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for your support. I'm sure we will have a very good uh, feature together. Yeah. Our company, uh, our group in Turkey, takes this business very seriously. This is only one beginning step, mm -hmm. the first step for our company. Mm -hmm. I hope in the future we will uh, just verify our business in agriculture, mm -hmm. not only cotton. Uh, we would like to get on the other uh, products. Okay. I'm sure uh, we will have a very good business here. Okay, thank you. In seven years, the Ethiopian state has already allocated one million hectares to foreign entrepreneurs. Eventually, they plan to give them three times more land, which represents the size of a country like Belgium. The region of Gambella is at the heart of all business deals. The deep green area which is already leased for the uh, investment. The light green, which is uh, already we have identified for the uh, investment, which is free from the uh, conservation area, which is free from the uh, settlement, and which is free from the individual farms. If we plan for development, the capital accumulation, the job opportunity, technology transfer, the uh, output uh, or the production increment, which is there. We need to work together with the investors to increase our uh, economy and to increase the profit margin of the investor together. Therefore, it is a win-win strategy. a strategy which appeals to the leading international groups. There are already over 70 foreigners who have signed long-term leases at very low rates. Rent that uh, investors pay is very cheap. It ranges from um, uh, five euros per hectare per year to about 20, 25 euros per hectare per year. In other African countries, rent, if you lease land, if investors lease land, the rent is 200 to 300 hectares, I mean, uh, euros per year. In Asian countries, it even goes up to four to 500 euros per, per year per hectare. So in the Ethiopia is uh, giving out land very, very cheap. Ethiopia is now one of the cheapest countries in Africa, attracting foreign investors. $6.55 per hectare and per year. It is the price negotiated by Ruchi, one of the biggest companies in the Indian agricultural sector. The group turned to Ethiopia in order to create new distribution channels. And we are having land from uh, starting from there to up to uh, 17 kilometers. This is our farmland, but we, what we have developed, we are going there. The company rents 25,000 hectares of totally virgin land. Their wealth consists of these soybeans that produce oils and biofuels. Soybean. This one is soybean. So last year we having uh, approximately uh, 200 hectares. This year we have developed approx uh, 300 uh, 3000 hectare and next year we are also planning just double of current year approx 6000 6000 hectare
वी आर नॉट डिपेंडेड ऑन लेबर्स टू मच वी हैव टू स्विच ओवर दिस मैकेनिकल सो वी आर यूजिंग है सी ड्रिल एंड ट्रैक्टर एंड वन ट्रैक्टर कैन डू अप्रोक्स वन हेक्टर इन वन आवर सो दिस वन इज ट्वेंटी फाइव हेक्टेयर तो इट विल रिक्वायर ट्वेंटी फाइव आवर्स In order to ensure production at an industrial level and reap two crops a year, the company has dug 24 wells. It has already brought 20 trucks in from Germany. A mechanized agriculture that is always looking for more outlets. The investors really don't have very little requirements, strict requirements, to uh, on the part of investors. It is uh, in fact is the contract is uh, extremely favorable to investors. Uh, they can grow any crop they want when they want it. They can sell in any market they want, whether it's a global market or the local market. In fact, most of them are not interested in the local market. For instance, I don't know if you visited uh, the Saudi uh, investment, Saudi Star Investment in Gambella. They are they have 10,000 hectares and they're producing rice. This rice is going to be exported to the Middle East, to Saudi Arabia and other places. The people in that neighboring area don't eat rice. Very little pressure and many advantages. Tax exemption access to local credit everything is done in order to encourage people and not only foreigners to buy land some members of the ethnic group in power take advantage of these lands that are being sold at a very low price for instance the businessmen established on the high plateau this is the case of baru he farms approximately 200 hectares yabbe ni yallebet nawon free yazebet yallukut no ihi mitayo free no አባኑ እንደዚህ ነው መጀመሪያው ይሄ ከዚህ እንደዚህ ከሆነ በኋላ ወደዚህ እንደዚህ መጣ ወደዚህ እንደዚህ ይሆናል ማለት ነው። ሰላም ናችሁ። ታደስ። እንዴ ነው? ሰላም ናችሁ። እንዴ ነው? እንዴ ነው? ሰላም ናችሁ። ያ። to work the land he uses a local workforce These young Anoaks come from nearby communities. አሁን ያሉት እንደዚህ የሚታዩ ሰራተኞች ናቸው ያሉት የተወሰነ ሰው ላይ ጥበቃ ላይ ያለ ሰው አለ ጥጡ ላይ ያለ ሰዎች አሉ ሌላ ዛ ታች ትራክተር ላይ የሚሰሩ ሰዎች አሉ እንደዚህ ናቸው አሁን እስካሁን ድረስ ያሉት ይሄ ግን ወቅቱን ጠብቆ በስብ ብዙ ሰራተኛ የሚመስልበት ጊዜ አለ አሁን ለምሳሌ ሃርቨስት ነው የምናደርግበት ጊዜ ብዙ ሰራተኛ ነው የሚያስፈልገው በጣም አንኛ በአገሪ ነው የምሰራ የአገሪ ልማት ያደገን ያለው እዚህ ውስጥ ገብቼ ድርሻ ያበው ወጣቴ በጣም ደስ ይለኛል ሲደመር በዚህ በኛ ጋር የሚሰራው ሰራተኛ ራስ ተቀጥሮ የሚሰራው ሰራተኛ ብሮ ተለውጦ ባይት በጣም ደስ ይላል። ይሄ በመስራታችን ይመጣል። A hundred extra helpers will be hired for each crop. But the jobs that are paid $40 per month consist of very basic tasks. benefit to the local population is very little they've taken away their land they've taken away their natural resources because these investors are clearing the land destroying the forest cutting down the trees so far the government claims uh, that one of the aims of this investment was to enable local areas to benefit by investment in infrastructure social services these benefits are not included in the contract 
is only left up to the magnanimity of the investor. These investors, in agreement with the government, are causing population displacement. Having you seen in Gambella, they are now taking away people from their places of uh, livelihood and putting them in, in resettlement. That is a, a massive uh, displacement. In order to encourage farmers to free their land, the government has launched a so-called villagization campaign. Officially, the goal is to improve their living standards by grouping them together in artificial villages. In Gambela, 28,000 people have been grouped together this way. <laughs> <laughs> 400 Anuaks have been living in this village for the last three years. Moot is one of these settlers. He was evicted from his land and was forced to join this program. <laughs> At the regional office in charge of the villagization program, they defend the merits of this grouping. They are not displaced. Objective to, to bring change between them, to bring change between them and to bring food security in the area level, in the family level. To bring these, these people must have to stay together. The old people living scattered in kilometer difference. Since they are living like this, we cannot give them water, clean water for each person, household, school, and agriculture inputs, and health service, unless they are together. On top of the food aid that the government gives out to the population, everyone who has joined the program, such as Omot, received one hectare of land to farm from the public authorities. <laughs> Arietta made the decision to live in the village because it is easier for her there to take care of her kids and to educate them. Mm -hmm. 
But his hopes for a better life didn't last very long. While they are waiting for the return of the school teachers, the kids work in the fields belonging to the investors. The clinic is closed as well because of a shortage of labor. Our mother the only promise the authorities kept is access to water. In the heart of the village, this well, where children come for water, is a real breakthrough for these families who used to walk several miles to fetch water. Back in Ogulu's community, men get ready to launch the canoe that they sculpted in wood. Despite the pressure from the authorities, Ogulu is refusing the villagization program. The community is resisting. They don't want to lose their land. <laughs> Looking for another livelihood, they have started fishing in a lake, which is one hour's walk from the village. Gamela, 
is rich in wildlife. This is an immense resource. It's, it's in fact much better to keep this wildlife than to, to get investors. I'm sure the, the benefit the, the people or the government gets by investors is much less than the benefit it will get by simply protecting the wildlife and the natural environment. Will the Anoaks and their lifestyle resist the whirlwind of globalization that is sweeping across Ethiopia? Africa is threatened by this mad rush to feed the planet. Will the Ethiopian government be able to take advantage of the development of its agriculture without sacrificing the soils or its populations? This is a matter for survival for these communities. Land is the only thing they've got. <laughs>